Braves won, Nationals nothing. We head to the second inning. And as we mentioned going to break, a very special treat for us and hopefully for you as well. We're joined by John Schurholtz and John Hart. Joe Simpson, Tom Glavin, yours truly, Chip Carey at the ballpark. Time to uh, discuss 2015-2016 uh, and beyond, fellas. Obviously, we've got less than a week to go in 2015. What went right? What went wrong? What would you do differently? What would you do the same? Well, it's my job tonight, according to Mr. Hart, to uh, talk about 2015. So I will. Um, I've been here 25 years with this organization, and it's the worst year uh, I've experienced in my life with this organization. And I'm sure the fans feel the same way. And I'm sure you guys may feel similarly. And we understand that. If this was a year that, by design, we knew that we had to make some uh, very aggressive and tough moves to get this organization uh, positioned so that we could pivot in the fashion uh, and in the direction we need to go, which is in a positive direction, like the Braves always have done, as, as Tommy knows well and you guys know well. And, and we believe we've done that, thanks to the work that John Hart, our president of baseball operations, this gentleman is sitting right next to me, and his, his, his trusty assistant, general manager, John Copalola, uh, they did remarkable work in a very short period of time, and we are now positioned with a farm system full of talent that we didn't have before, and, and some acquisitions we've made that we think we're, we're poised so that 2016, the Braves fans and we sitting here tonight and anybody who watches the Braves and loves the Braves will be thrilled and happy about what they see on this field in 2016, which will be a foretaste of what's to come in 17, 18, and 19. So uh, it's a tough year. We admit that. We own it. We live up to it. We can't, uh, we can't make excuses about it, but we're on the right track and we're headed in the right direction. This is Ian Desmond for Washington. He's their shortstop, man aboard with nobody out in the second inning. And Williams Perez dropped that in for a strike. So, Mr. Hart, what can we expect uh, for 16? Well, I, I think uh, a couple of things. Um, uh, we realize that uh, our bullpen is, is an area that we really need to uh, I think aggressively get after this uh, this winter and uh, I mean we can all sit here and you know point to the Grilly injury uh, we traded Jim Johnson uh, as John said we were aggressive we ended up trading Craig Kimbrell on opening day uh, and I, I think again we were just thin and we didn't have the bullpen I think to support the young starting pitching that we have uh, so I think uh, we're going to be uh, very aggressive in the winter and adding bullpen pieces. We think Grilly's going to come back. Uh, we're really happy with what we see from Fiscaino. Um, but uh, we think that there's going to be two, three, four additional pieces. And, it, and in addition, we have, you know, two or three guys sitting down there on the DL down in uh, Florida, guys that we've acquired. Uh, uh, Shea Simmons uh, is a guy that's going to be back next year. Uh, it's a guy that we had counted on this year that, uh, that went down. So I think the bullpen's a priority. Uh, we're going to examine some starting pitching. We're, we're happy with the young starters we have. We're disappointed. Fulte hadn't been able to pitch uh, here the last six weeks. Um, the same thing with Manny Benuelos, but we like both of those kids. Um, and we, we don't have a whole lot of other upper-level starters ready, so we might take a look in the starting rotation. Uh, we might, might take a, a, a look there as we go into the winter as well. On top of that, how close are some some position players? Is that some place you're also going to be addressing, or do you feel like there's some people that might be close to helping out there? Malik Smith comes to mind. Yeah, I, I think uh, Malik is obviously going to be in spring training with us. Uh, he's down at the instructional league now, and we've got, by the way, to echo what John said, we've got a lot of good-looking young players that are down there. Uh, a lot of the players that we've acquired in deals, you know, guys we hadn't, you know, we picked up in the draft. I mean, there's been a lot of good things that are going on there quietly down below Latin American guys as well Latin America we had a real good international uh, signing period so I you know I, I think in looking at uh, at, at our, our upper level position players um, we don't have a lot of power we don't have a lot of power bats Malik Smith is the closest guy leadoff hitter center fielder uh, we think that there's a chance he could come sometime during 16 but um, timetable might be more uh, like 17 but he's a table setter he's a leadoff guy um, he was our uh, you know player of the year in the minor leagues. This guy had a really special year and it's an exciting young player. Two balls no strikes to Wilson Ramos and now three and zero oh from Williams Perez. Lead off single and a walk to Ian Desmond as the Nationals bat here in the second inning. 
You know, I, I think, again, you know, you, you, you talk about the young position players. When we made a lot of these deals, uh, obviously we got a lot of pitching back by design. Uh, but uh, clubs aren't clubs aren't parting with uh, with young power bats. It's uh, very difficult. We, you know, we talked about a lot of guys that we just couldn't get. They wouldn't they wouldn't part with them. And I, I think that one of the things that we've looked at that you either have to go out in the free agent market, you've got to sign, or you're going to have to draft them yourself. Because if you've got somebody that's young and has a chance to hit mid order in today's world. Uh, those guys are are few and far between to be able to acquire. We like some of the young bats uh, that we've acquired uh, uh, through the draft. Braxton Davidson's going to probably move to Carolina next year. We like what we see there. Austin Riley uh, that we got with pick 41 that we got in the Kimbrell trade is a um, good looking kid. He had a home run today in the instruction league in their first ball game down there. So you know we got some kids but they're 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 down the line a little bit. Let me also add this too. what we did this winter. One there, and the throw to first is in time. How about that double play by Anderson Simmons? Splendid. What we did this winter was intentional and by design. How it turned out the second half was, was not intentional, nor was it by design. Because when Jason got hurt, we lost our closer, of course, having traded Kimbrell, uh, who we hated trading, or we, it was tough for us to do because we all love what Greg Kimbrell is to this organization, was to this organization. But we didn't believe that we would have legitimate save chances for he. And, and his and, and his status. Uh, so we did this intentionally and I think we did it very well. I think John and John Capalola did it very well and we're poised again as I re repeating myself to move forward in a very progressive and, 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 and a positive way. And the team we put on the field we've made a vow that this team is going to reflect who the Atlanta Braves are by those pennants strung up on that wall out there. We may not win division championships. But we're going to be competitive in a team that the fans are going to love watching play. It's almost funny too, guys as uh, we're going to walk Michael Taylor if the first half and second half of the season had been reversed. We might be having a totally different conversation. Braves started 42 and 42 and then obviously with all the trades and everything else that took place uh, a much different uh, a different outcome as far as the wins and losses are concerned. Yeah chip it uh, that's uh, that, that's uh, for sure. Um, you know we I don't think I've ever been as excited. Uh, with a 500 club as I was watching this club play the first half I think there were very low expectations we made you know we had to do a lot of team building on the fly during the winter uh, we couldn't really actively get involved we didn't know exactly what was going to happen and uh, we we went for a lot of good makeup guys uh, some of the some of the younger players that uh, we gave opportunities to but you know at the end of it this club did overachieve and and I, I think our lack of depth caught up with us we continued to make deals uh, I think as we went along with the objective being that you know we were you know we were focused and committed on what it is that we're doing and that is building a strong foundation and I, I think to John's point that uh, as we went into the second half I don't think anybody really wanted to see the collapse but you know when we 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 lost some guys with injuries we traded guys off we just didn't get big league players back we just didn't have the depth at the upper levels and uh, I, I think that's a you know that's a uh, it was very tough for us to watch very tough to swallow we all you know we wore this every night you know watching what this club did but you know at the same point we you know this this chapter is going to close and we are in much better position going forward than we were a year ago today. I know that we we talk a lot about 2017 but I, I'm going back, back from 17 to next year uh, with the money that at least from the outside looking in was saved. From a budget standpoint, with guys that were traded away, will there be some room to do some things this coming winter? We're going to have financial flexibility that we didn't have last year before these trades were made. So, to answer your question, yes, we're going to be more uh, light on our feet financially. Good. Wow. Yeah. Good. Thank you. I'm glad you're feeling better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's good to hear. So, I, I think we all talk to fans around this around the state. We talk to fans all across the country. That's one of the big questions they have there's money that has been saved is that money going to be available and if so how do the Braves intend to spend it. Yeah I, I think to John's point uh, you know we have provided ourselves a level of flexibility I, I, I will say this that um, with some of the dollars that you know, we saved this year uh, we didn't blink I mean we turned that into a, you know, we went out and we acquired a Tuki Tucson it was almost a buy to go get another young upside starter. Uh, we got picked 75 when we picked up Trevor Cahill. I mean there were some dollars that were spent but with the idea that we were going to continue to add quality young players into the lower levels of our system. 
and I, I we feel good about that. That's a that's a great foundation. It's uh, it's it's a farm system that has gotten stronger because we put the dollars into it. I, I think in the go forward, uh, we certainly will have some level of flexibility this year. I think that uh, we are probably not going to be big players in the, if you will, in the in the you know front line starting pitching market. Um, we'll talk to everybody that's out there. Uh, I'm not sure in 2016 we're going to jump out and you know onto a big front line position player. Um, but I, I think that there's going to be enough dollars for us to take the areas, <clears throat> excuse me, where we know we, we have our holes and we're going to add quality pieces. We're going to be able to spend money in the bullpen. We're going to take a look at a starting pitcher. Um, but at the same point, you know, we, we with these young players that we have, uh, if the right deal were to come and we felt we had some surplus somewhere and we could acquire another younger player that we could control for a way, we're going to we're going to take a look at that as well. Um, so I, I, I think there's a lot of ways for us to go about it. And uh, and I think that the uh, the financial flexibility will allow us to really fill the holes that we have. We are going to have even greater flexibility when we go into 17. I think that's a year where things really open up for us uh, a little bit more. But, you know, same point uh, to John's point. Um, we're looking at um, without any question. It's not like we have to offload money this year. It's not like we have to, you know, get rid of bad contracts. It's not like, uh, you know, we have one year guys that we're looking to move. We look at the players that we like, the guys that we feel deserve to be here. We're going to give them an opportunity to play. Uh, we're going to continue to try to give opportunity to our young starters as much as we can. And we we just don't have the bullpen pieces that we need now. And that's, I think, is going to be a focus. Anderson Simmons shoots one into right field that drops in front of Bryce Harper for a leadoff hit for Atlanta as the Braves back in the second inning. John, can you give us uh, an update on the stadium construction? I, I was telling the guys yesterday, I drove down Highway 41. I could see the big beams for the new scoreboard already in place. What else is going on? Yeah, it's really spectacular. That that really is a signature piece right now. All, the, all those steel girders going up to support that video board in center field. It's coming along splendidly, Joe, and uh, we're, we're just delighted. We are on schedule, if not a slightly uh, ahead of schedule a bit with that facility. Um, soon you'll see uh, the mixed-use development come out of the ground, and uh, as we said time and time again, it's the first time in the history of professional sport that a worth and Desmond got mixed up, but still a force play. Simmons in no man's land, thinking that ball was going to be caught. It wasn't. And he's out number one at second base. That a stadium and a mixed use development will be will be built and come out of the ground simultaneously, which no one has ever done before. And it's a challenge, but we think it's the proper thing to do. Uh, and uh, we're excited about that. And we're, every time we go out there, we have meetings out there at least once a week. Uh, and we look right across the street from where we are, the preview center, where season ticket holders are coming to re uh, renew their tickets, right out on the, in the new ballpark, and it's phenomenal. It's really, it's really exciting, even for an old person like me. Tom's, Tom's really shy. He just wanted to make sure that you had his parking space all laid out, that he's got a really convenient parking space. We've, we've got it. Well, We've got it. well, that'll beat this place because when I pull in here, they want to know why I'm parking where I park. Don't I have a spot here? And they don't know who I am, so it's okay. They don't you feel know. alone. No, that. you got that problem yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that happens. <laughs> Williams but. Perez lays down a butt, and he's going to be credited with a sacrifice. And there's the second out of the inning. I got to say that it, it's a little bit funny, but not funny, haha. -ha, but it, it, you know, you talk about the fans in town and. You know, with all due respect to you, John, I know this has been a bad year for you, but I had a couple here before you got here that weren't were worse than this. And it's been funny uh, hearing people around town, and even some of the guys in the clubhouse that, that have come up to me lately and said, God, were you guys really that bad in the late 80s and the early 90s? And I said, yeah, we were. And to be honest with you, this team, I think, is a lot closer to being able to be successful than we were at that point in time. And, you know, I maintain that a couple tweaks here and there but you know I think we'll all agree that this process maybe could have been done even a couple of years ago but it's hard to do when you're still winning and, and you guys have not been in an easy position with that. Yeah. Exactly Tom you're right about that I'll let John continue because we've had the same conversation that you just mentioned this team is closer than it may look and John's had some conversations that uh, said shed some light on that. Yeah I, you know Tom it uh, you know, I, I think the organization made a, a very difficult decision. I mean, this wasn't an easy decision. It's Atlanta Braves. I mean, it's one thing if you're, uh, that's good. Going with a base hit. Runner around third is going to score. Born on his way to second on the Harper throw to the plate. It's two to nothing. 
But I think going back to it, uh, as an organization like Atlanta, you've had so much winning that it's hard to take a step back. It, uh, you know, even though we're we're sitting there with one-year players on each corner in Hayward and Upton that we loved, we didn't feel we were going to retain them. Uh, and some of the moves that uh, that we had where we had to offload some dollars those were very difficult decisions because it was a club that if you will ran up the white flag before the season started we again we wanted to walk two lines we wanted to have a competitive club we think we did in the first half um, but I, I, I take I applaud uh, the you know ownership group uh, John uh, for having the foresight to say look we're gonna make the tough call and we're going to take a step back with the with the idea we're going to take two steps forward. And it's it's it, it sometimes is easier in other markets. You know, it, at the time, Atlanta didn't have those pennants that were hanging on the board. They were the Atlanta Braves and it was great, but they they didn't have that track record. And, and sometimes it's easier to make those tough calls and to step back and grow it the right way. I mean, all you have to do is look up at Kansas City. How many years have they gone through? You look at Pittsburgh, you look at Houston. I mean, you look at these the Cubs, and these are clubs right now that are loaded up, and they've done it because they've gone through a lot of pain. We made it clear that we're not going to go that route. We don't want to sit there and and be there for five years and you know be picking one, two, or three and get all these young star players. We want to be able, as as John said, to pivot quicker. Um, and we didn't want it to be quite this painful, but um, here we are, and next year is coming. But you know what? Final thought here. We're not used to this. To your point about it being the worst, right. we're just not used to it. We're used to being competitive and winning, so it's been a hard adjustment for all of us, but we know the good days are ahead.